The Vancey is a traditional halibut schooner that was built in 1913 here in Seattle. And it is consistently fished for uh, halibut since the day it was built. It has never missed a season and it continues to be an active and very productive boat in the long line halibut and sablefish fishery. The Vancey and all the similar vessels around here started using the locks shortly after they were built, a hundred years ago. Without the locks, we wouldn't have this fishing fleet you see here. So the ship canal and the locks has been really instrumental in helping develop and maintain the commercial fishing industry in the Seattle area. See, I was born on uh, Hitchrup, right here, island off the west coast of Norway. My name is Per Odegaard, and I'm a commercial halibut fisherman, as well as a, uh, as a black-eyed fisherman. Okay, here we have the, uh, the Vancey and the Polaris when they were uh, built. The Vancey was built in 1913 by a builder called John Strand. It was built outside the locks, not too far from where Ray's Boathouse is right now. The name Vancey comes from a community in southern Norway called Vancey Commune. The original owner came from uh, Vancey, Norway. When it was originally built, it was built for dory fishing. It carried six dories with a crew of 15 men. It was two men per dory, but dory fishing was basically outlawed in the 1930s because it was so dangerous. The loss of life was tremendous, as you can imagine, these 17-foot boats out in the middle of the ocean. In the 1930s, they developed technology to haul and set from the schooner itself, where you had a, a girdy, which is just a power winch, which was mechanically driven, that you could use to, to retrieve the gear with. And the gear is a traditional longline gear, which is a line about the diameter of your finger with hook space every 18 feet or so, and the gear is anchored to the bottom. I started fishing with my father. who bought in this boat in 1960. It was an old boat when he bought into it. And, uh, you know, from high school on, this was, you know, the family farm. I went and worked on the family farm. And this is how the family made their living. Our normal cycle of activity is we leave Seattle around the 1st of April, head up to Alaska, stop in Ketchikan and get our ice and bait. Then we start fishing in southeast Alaska and work our way up into the Gulf of Alaska and then on into Bering Sea and through Bering Sea out the Aleutian Islands. And then we work our way back again to where, where our last trip is for Halibut, and that's in the Gulf of Alaska. And we run that last trip down to Bellingham to load. Let's uh, step aboard here and i give you the tour. Take a look up here. This would be the pilot house. And of course, you know, over the years, Electronics have become the big thing. We have two depth sounders, single sideband radio, navigation computers, satellite telephone, kind of goes on and on, radars. But uh, this is what's normal on boats nowadays. This would be the fish hold down here. We pack 95,000 pounds of ice halibut, 10 tons of ice and 95,000 pounds of halibut. That's what we carry. We're heading to the forecastle. Hey, you making coffee? This is my son, Nils. <laughs> he is the next generation of fishermen on the Vancey. Now, this is a traditional forecastle. Forecastle is actually an abbreviation for forward castle. Now we've got eight bunks. There used to be 10 bunks here when we had 15 men in the old days originally. And you needed all those bunks. Well, I've been asked why I don't get rid of this old wooden boat and buy a steel boat. Part of it is the cost. To build a new boat capable of doing what this does right now is, is $4 million. As you look at these old wooden boats, you have to realize how sustainable they are. They've lasted 100 years, and you're not going to get a steel boat that's going to last 100 years. We live in such a disposable society where nobody can fix anything. I mean, is there a TV repairman anymore? <laughs> I don't know, I haven't seen one. <laughs> it's better to reuse and to recycle. And you can do things yourself on a wood boat, which are difficult to do on a steel boat. 
These boats here, especially in this port, they can be repaired, they can be maintained, and you can get a lot of use from them. As you look at this 100-year-old boat and 100-year-old locks, you realize that they're both important to each other. When the locks were built here, they facilitated this port, made it what it is, because the locks give us access to fresh water, which is the important factor in maintaining these vessels and maintaining the longevity because of the marine growth, boring worms, these type of things, they don't live in fresh water. So it's just added tremendously longevity of not only this vessel, but vessels made of steel as well. A large portion of the fleet that fish in Alaska are home ported in Seattle because of the goods and services that are available here. And also the climate is a little more conducive to getting work done here than it is in Alaska. The goods and services that are available here are instrumental in keeping the fleet here. That's why a working waterfront is so important to the fishing industry and to Seattle. When you leave Seattle to head out to the grounds and you go down the locks, there's always kind of a sinking feeling as you go down. And then as you pass out, this iron gate closes behind you and you go, oh boy, this is it. You know what's in store for you. You're heading out the ocean. But when you come home, it's a different story. You, you enter the locks, and as the locks fill up, the level of the boat rises. So your emotions tend to rise with that, because <laughs> you know it, it's over, and you're coming home. Mm -hmm.